The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews that dwelt in the land of Egypt, at Migdal, at Taphanes, at Memphis, and in the land of Pathros. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You have seen all the evil that I brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. Behold, this day they are a desolation, and no one dwells in them because of the wickedness which they committed, provoking me to anger in that they went to burn incense and serve other gods that they knew not, neither they, nor you, nor your fathers. Yet I persistently sent to you all my servants the prophets, saying, O oh, do not do this abominable thing that I hate. But they did not listen or incline their ear to turn from their wickedness and burn no incense to other gods. Therefore my wrath and my anger were poured forth and kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they became a waste and a desolation, as at that, as at this day. And now thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Why do you commit this great evil against yourselves, to cut off from you man and woman, infant and child, from the midst of Judah, leaving you no remnant? Why do you provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, burning incense to other gods, in the land of Egypt, where you have come to live, that you may be cut off and become a curse and a taunt among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers, the wickedness of the kings of Judah, the wickedness of their wives, your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives, which they committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They have not humbled themselves even to this day, nor have they feared nor walked in my law and my statutes, which I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil, to cut off all Judah. I will take the remnant of Judah, who have set their faces to come to the land of Egypt, to live, and they shall all be consumed in the land of Egypt, and they shall fall. By the sword and by famine they shall be consumed, from the least to the greatest. They shall die by the sword and by famine, and they shall become an execration, a horror, a curse, and a taunt. I will punish those who dwell in the land of Egypt as I have punished Jerusalem, with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah, who have come to live in the land of Egypt, shall escape or survive or return to the land of Judah, to which they desire to return to dwell there, for they shall not return except some fugitives. Then all the men who knew that their wives had offered incense to other gods, and all the women who stood by, a great assembly, all the people who dwelled in Pathros, in the land of Egypt, answered Jeremiah, as for the word which you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you, but we will do everything that we have vowed. Burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour out libations to her, as we did, both we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of food and prospered and saw no evil. But since we left off burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out libations to her, we have lacked everything and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. And the women said, When we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out libations to her, was it without our husband's approval that we made cakes for her, bearing her image and pouring out libations to her? Then Jeremiah said to all the people, men and women, all the people who had given him this answer, As for the incense that you burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember it? Did it not come into his mind? The Lord could no longer bear your evil doings and the abominations which you committed. Therefore your land has become a desolation and a waste and a curse without inhabitant, as it is this day. It is because you burned incense and because you sinned against the Lord and did not obey the voice of the Lord or walk in his law and in his statutes and in his testimonies that this evil has befallen you as at this day. Jeremiah said to all the people and all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah who are in the land of Egypt. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, you and your wives have declared with your mouths and have fulfilled it with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have made to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out libations to her. Then confirm your vows and perform your vows. Therefore hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah who dwell in the land of Egypt. 
Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says the Lord, that my name shall no more be invoked by the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, As the Lord God lives. Behold, I am watching over them for evil and not in, and not for good. All the men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by famine until there is an end of them. All those who escape the sword shall return from the land of Egypt to the land of Judah, few in number. And all the remnant of Judah who came to the land of Egypt to live shall know whose word will stand, mine or theirs. This shall be the sign to you, says the Lord, that I will punish you in this place in order that you may know that my words will surely stand against you for evil. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the land of his enemies, and into the hand of those who seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, who was his enemy and sought his life. The word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch, the son of Neriah, when he wrote these words in a book at the dictation of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to you, O Baruch, you said, Woe is me, for the Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with my groaning, and I find no rest. Thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, what I have built I am breaking down, and what I have planted I am plucking up that is, the whole land. And do you seek great things for yourself? Seek them not, for behold, I am bringing evil upon all flesh, says the Lord, but I will give you your life as a prize of war in all places to which you may go. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the nations. About Egypt. Concerning the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, which was by the river Euphrates, at Carchemish, and which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, defeated in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Prepare buckler and shield, and advance for battle. Harness the horses, mount or, horse, or horsemen. Take your stations with your helmets, polish your spears, put on your coats of mail. Why have I seen it? They are dismayed, and have turned backward. Their warriors are beaten down, and have fled in haste. They look not back, terror on every side, says the Lord. The swift cannot flee away, nor the warrior escape. In the north, by the river Euphrates, they have stumbled and fallen. Who is this, rising like the Nile, like, river, like rivers whose waters surge? Egypt rises like the Nile, like rivers whose waters surge. He said, I will rise, I will cover the earth, I will destroy cities and their inhabitants. Advance, O horses, and rage, O chariots. Let the warriors go forth, men of Ethiopia and Put, who handle the shield, men of Lud, skilled in hand handling the bow. That day is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, to avenge himself on his foes. The sword shall devour and be sated, and drink its fill of their blood. For the Lord God of hosts holds a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Go up to Gilead and take balm, O virgin daughter of Egypt. In vain you have used many medicines. There is no healing for you. The nations have heard of your shame, and the earth is full of your cry. For warrior has stumbled against warrior. They have both fallen together. The word which the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to strike the land of Egypt. Declare in Egypt and proclaim in Migdal, proclaim in Memphis and Taphanes, say, stand ready and be prepared, for the sword shall devour round about you. Why has Apis fled? Why did not your bull stand? Because the Lord thrust him down. Your multitude stumbled and fell. And they said one to another, Arise, and let us go back to your own people, and to the land of our birth, because of the sword of the oppressor. Call the name of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, noisy one who lets the hour go by. As I live, says the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts, like Tabor among the mountains, and like Carmel by the sea, shall one come. Prepare yourselves baggage for exile, O inhabitants of Egypt. For Memphis shall become a waste, a ruin without inhabitant. A beautiful heifer is Egypt, but a gadfly from the north has come upon her. 
even her hired soldiers in her midst, are like fatted calves. Yes, they have turned and fled together. They did not stand. For the day of their calamity has come upon them, the time of their punishment. She makes a sound like a serpent, gliding away, for her enemies march in force, and come against her with axes. Like those who fell trees, they shall cut down her forest, says the Lord. Though it is impenetrable, because they are more numerous than locusts, they are without number. The daughter of Egypt shall be put to shame. She shall be delivered into the hand of a people from the north. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, said, Behold, I am bringing punishment upon Ammon of Thebes and Pharaoh and Egypt and her gods and her kings upon Pharaoh and those who trust in him. I will deliver them into the hand of those who seek their life, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his officers. Afterward, Egypt shall be inhabited as in the days of old, says the Lord. But fear not, O Jacob, my servant, nor be dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save you from afar, and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return and have quiet and ease, and none shall make him afraid. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, says the Lord, for I am with you. I will make a full end of all the nations to which I have driven you, but of you I will not make a full end. I will chasten you in just measure, and I will by no means leave you unpunished. Whereas many great teachings have been given to us through the law, and the prophets and the others that followed them, on account of which we should praise Israel for instruction and wisdom, and since it is necessary not only that the readers themselves should acquire understanding, but also that those who love learning should be able to help the outsiders by both speaking and writing, my grandfather Jesus, after devoting himself especially to the reading of the law, and the prophets and the other books of our fathers, and after acquiring consider considerable proficiency in them, was himself also led to write something pertaining to instruction and wisdom, in order that, by becoming conversant with this also, those who love learning should make even greater progress in living according to the law. You are urged, therefore, to read with good will and attention, and to be indulgent in cases where, despite our diligent labor in translating, we may seem to have rendered some phrases imperfectly, for what was originally expressed in Hebrew does not have exactly the same sense when translated into another language. Not only this work, but even the law itself, the prophecies, and the rest of the books differ not a little as originally expressed. When I came to Egypt in the 38th year of the reign of Eugertes, and stayed for some time, I found opportunity for no little instruction. It seemed highly necessary that I should myself devote some pains and labor to the translation of the following book, using in that period of time great watchfulness and skill in order to complete and publish the book for those living abroad who wish to gain learning, being prepared in character to live according to the law. Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, Remember that you were at the time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near in the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby bringing the hostility to an end. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The prologue to Sirach discusses the problem of translating the book from Hebrew into Greek, 
Translation is a laborious process, the author explains, and it can be difficult to express ideas originally written in another language. This problem of translation is not just an ancient one, nor one that pertains strictly to language. St. Paul speaks about a different kind of translation, where the Jewish covenant is translated, we might say, by Christ into a universal language that invites all people. Christians are always translating the gospel into new languages, but also into new cultures and new situations. In Jeremiah, the Israelites have been physically translated, i.e. moved, into Egypt, but rather than taking their ancient faith into their new situation, they have abandoned it. When we bring the gospel with us into the world, we should reflect on which words we can use to authentically express the truth to modern culture. It is an art to find the appropriate language to effectively preach the gospel without allowing the surrounding culture to dictate our forms of expression. Do you ever spend time thinking about how themes found in modern books, movies, or other media can help you explain the faith while also considering their limitations?